Hey everybody, it's Drew from Como Comic Books. Thanks for joining us today on our YouTube channel. In this video, we're bringing you another top 10 comics list. This time, the top 10 Bronze Age comics to invest in before it's too late. Stay with us. Welcome back. If we're just meeting, my name's Drew Stewart. I'm the owner of Como Comic Books. We are a Columbia, Missouri based comic book vendor and you will find us at comic book shows and comic book conventions all around the area. Here on our YouTube channel, we bring you the best tips and tricks to take your comic collection to the next level. If you've been collecting comics for any time at all, you have noticed that in the last few years, the price or value of Silver Age comics in all grades have really jumped up. Golden Age books experienced a similar phenomenon several years ago and have been commanding premium prices for some time now. Now that Silver Age prices are hitting higher and higher values, collectors are transitioning away from the Silver Age and focusing on Bronze Age comics. And values of Bronze Age comics are now starting to really climb. If you've known me for any amount of time, you've surely heard me talk about the sense of urgency that I have and have encouraged others to have in regard to investing in or collecting Bronze Age comics sooner rather than later. We're now several years past the point when I began sharing that advice with my friends and other collectors, and it's beginning to come to a head. Bronze Age key comics are on the verge of pricing themselves out of the affordability range of several collectors. There are some books that have already priced themselves out. These are books such as Incredible Hulk 181, Amazing Spider-Man 129, and Werewolf by Night 32. These are some of the best, most highly sought after issues from the Bronze Age. The goal of this video is to kind of draw a line in the sand and say, if you are interested in collecting Bronze Age comic books or investing in Bronze Age key comic books, these are the books that I would recommend you make a priority right now before the value and expense associated with picking these books up climbs outside of the budget of the standard collector. That said, everybody has a different budget. Some of these books are certainly more accessible than others and may have a wider appeal to the general collector. Our list contains books that are accessible to a variety of collectors, whether your budget is more modest or more robust. Let's go ahead and get into the list. The first book on our top 10 Bronze Age comics to invest in now list is Marvel Spotlight number five. This is the first appearance of Johnny Blaze in the modern Ghost Rider that most comic collectors and fans are familiar with. Marvel Spotlight 5 hit stands in August of 1972. It was written by Gary Frederick with art from Michael Plug. Next on our list is Marvel Premiere 15. This book is the first appearance of Iron Fist. I think right now is a great time to pursue Marvel Premiere 15. The Netflix show didn't really do Iron Fist any favors and due to the moratorium between the Netflix and Disney deal kind of burning out. The, the characters had a bit of a resting period. And with that, the value associated with this book has come down and it's off of its highs by quite a little bit. Marvel Premiere 15 was written by Roy Thomas with art from Gil Kane. Marvel Premiere 15 was cover dated May of 1974. Next on our list, and it may be a slight stretch for the Bronze Age, this is the earliest book on our list, and that is Scooby-Doo number one from Gold Key. Scooby-Doo number one was released in March of 1970, and it is the first appearance of Scooby-Doo in comic books. The classic cartoon had already come out on television, but this is the first time we see Scooby-Doo in print. This is a particularly difficult issue to find, especially in high grade as such, it makes it very desirable. Prices for high grade copies have really started to climb the last few years. And this may well be the hardest book to track down of all 10 books on this list. Scooby-Doo number one was written by Joe Ruby and features art from Jack Manning. Book number four is Batman 251. 
Batman 251 features an extremely famous Neil Adams Joker cover. Released in September of 1973, this DC classic features a legendary creative team being written by Denny O'Neill with art from Neil Adams. Number five on our list is Hero for Hire number one. Released in June of 1972, Hero for Hire one features the first appearance of Luke Cage. Similar to Marvel Premiere 15, which we spoke about earlier, Luke Cage is fresh out of the Netflix Marvel shows due to the show wrapping up, Luke Cage being off of TV and not making his debut in the Marvel Cinematic Universe just yet. Hero for Hire number one has seen its value come back off of highs from a few years ago. As of right now, presents as a pretty good value and a solid investment. This issue was written by Archie Goodwin and features art from John Romita Sr. Number six on our list is Batman 232. This is another classic Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams pairing and features the first appearance of Batman rogues gallery member, Raz Al Ghul. Hitting the stands in June of 1971, this issue has been hot for a couple of years. Raz Al Ghul, of course, was featured in the first Christopher Nolan Batman movie and interest in Roz and the League of Shadows has steadily increased ever since. Number seven on our list is Tomb of Dracula number 10. Released in July of 1973, Tomb of Dracula 10 features the first appearance of Blade the Vampire Hunter. In a story written by Marv Wolfman and illustrated by Gil Kane, this book is really hot right now. We have a Blade movie that was announced for the Marvel Cinematic Universe last year. And this is an issue that had seen interest prior to the announcement. And since the movie announcement has continued to increase in value at an even faster pace. Number eight on our list is one of the Bronze Age's mega keys. Number eight is Giant Size X-Men number one. Released in May of 1975, Giant Size X-Men number one features the first appearance of the new X-Men team. In addition to that, it also features the second appearance of Wolverine, the first appearance of several fan favorite characters such as Nightcrawler, Storm, and Colossus. Written by Lynn Ween and illustrated by Dave Cockrum, Giant Size X-Men 1 is one of the best investments you can make in a Bronze Age comic book. This can be a tough book to find in high grade due to the fact that it is a square bound issue. We all know the wonderful defects that commonly are associated with square bound books, whether it's spine splits, staples pushing through, they're just really tough to find in high grade. And you'll see that reflected in the value of Giant Size X-Men number one. You can get lower grade, mid grade copies that are fairly affordable, but when you start climbing into the higher grades, the price really begins to jump. That said, this book is worth every penny you can devote to it. And I'll just come right out and say it. If you can only budget for one book on this list, Giant Size X-Men number one should be that book. Number nine on our list is House of Secrets 92. This issue, written by Jerry Conaway and illustrated by Bernie Wrightson, features the first appearance of Swamp Thing. Released in July of 1971, Swamp Thing would go on to become a fan favorite character, having his own TV show and later series written by Alan Moore, which is very highly regarded in the comics community. Number 10 on our list is All-Star Western number 10. Released in March of 1972, All-Star Western 10 features the first appearance of Jonah Hex. Written by John Albano, illustrated by Tony DiZaniga, Jonah Hex is one of those characters that hasn't been given a proper treatment and been effectively developed for TV or a movie. As more characters are developed for TV and for movies, the higher the likelihood is that somebody's gonna dust off Jonah Hex and incorporate him into their next project. Due to that, I think All-Star Western number 10 is a worthwhile investment if you're shopping for a Bronze Age key. While I think the best time to invest in Bronze Age comics was five to 10 years ago, 
There are still a lot of books out there that are worth chasing down. Don't get discouraged if you look back and see where prices work. The important thing in all of this is to just be sure that you're collecting what you enjoy. If you're new to comic collecting or always on the lookout for the next book to add to your collection, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're gonna to continue to bring you the best tips and tricks to take your comic collection to the next level. If you got value, please drop us a comment, hit the like button. Also, let us know what other kind of videos you'd like to see us do.